So once again, we would like to welcome you to First Congregational Church. If you were here last week, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new, welcome to the church, and we hope you'll come again. Um, first Congregational Church was the first church, first established church of Westfield. Uh, it began around 1671, uh, where, in which time we called a minister from Boston. Uh, his name was Reverend Edward Taylor, and he came out to be our first settled pastor. Um, he would go on to be the minister here for another 58 years, and not only was he minister, but he was also a town physician, and years later was known, was recognized as one of the finest colonial poets in all of America. So we're quite proud of him. And there will be another lecture about Edward Taylor, um, I think in March. Um, so First Church didn't begin in this building. There was a much smaller building back in the 1600s. It was 18 feet by 18 feet. It looked a lot like the meeting house that's at the Stanley Park now. And it was located down the little river right before you get to Salvation Army. Uh, it was moved several times as they had to build larger and larger buildings. And this is actually the fourth building. This building replaced the third building uh, soon after the steeple fell through the ceiling down into the congregation. Uh, luckily not on a Sunday morning. So I'm sure you're all looking up now. And, uh, <laughs> Our steeple now has been up there for 160 years, so I'm sure you are fine. Um, as I said, Reverend, Reverend Taylor uh, was our minister here uh, from 1860 on is when this church began. So I have a few announcements. Um, the last week, if you missed the lecture, it is on our church website as well as the Westfield 350th website. Our church is churchonthegreen.org or westfield350th.org, if you'd like to take a look at that lecture. Um, if there are any teachers in the audience, um, please make sure you sign up at the table here or out uh, back uh, to get your PD, PDP points for being here. So we appreciate any teachers. If any my students are here too, they will get homework passes. Um, our, we have a reception, which will be through this door out in the dining room, and you all are welcome to come back to that afterwards. We would love to have a chance to talk with you, and Bob will be out there as well. So at this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker for tonight. Uh, this is Bob Madison. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting the sign for the back. There is more information about our church uh, in the pews if you'd like to read more about the church. Um, Bob comes to us from Southwick. He's originally from Westfield, but lives in Southwick now. And he is an avid outdoors person. He does just about everything outdoors. Um, and also has a, a great interest in the canals, which you'll hear about tonight. He is a wonderful painter as well, uh, among his many talents. And he's going to be sharing his story with us tonight. Again, thank you for coming. Where it ends up. 
The other thing is about my book, people didn't know where the canal was. Now, by buying the book, the bicycle path to the canal may or may not be in the same spot. The canal follows the contours of the earth. The bicycle path follows the railroad. And of course, railroads are in straight lines. Now, a little bit of uh, background. Well, I assume most of the folks here are from Westfield, but I uh, went to Westfield High School in 1961. My wife went to St. Mary's High School in 1961. We dated while we were in high school, married for 52 years. Uh, she was a second grade teacher at Highland School in the early years. And then in later years, she retired from the West Springfield school system as special ed teacher and a first grade teacher. Myself, I'm retired from Pratt Whitney, Pratt Whitney Aircraft, which had engine people. Eight years in engineering and 22 years in finance. To this day, when I fly, I always look at the wing of, a, of the airplanes to see which <coughs> engines are on these airplanes because a lot of effort goes into the design and manufacture of jet engines, and it's very reliable. After retirement, 30 years, I took a different path, and I worked for the state of Massachusetts, the Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission. I would audit pensions. West City of Westcott would audit their pension, Worcester, uh, Pittsfield, Martha's Vineyard, Middlesex County, I would travel the state, examine the pension system. Uh, I was at Boston City Hall, and when the second plane hit the Twin Towers, I can tell you, if I got on a dot as fast as I could, I walked right to the South Station, jumped the Peter Pan bus, and came back home. Now, my interest in the canal, my folks lived off the Shaker Road on Locust Street, and every day I would cross the canal to catch a bus. But I didn't know that there was a canal there. About 25 years later, I went to a lecture at the Westfield Library, and Dr. Carl Walter, who was a physician at Dover Hospital, gave a lecture about the canal. And it dawned on me that my parents' house, the canal went right by it. And I said, you know, what a shame. Bulldozers would come in, level the canal, build houses on it, developers would just destroy the canal, and they did that because, I guess, really nobody knew that the canal existed in that certain location. So I thought, gee, I'm going to write a book. The trouble about a book is, about a canal, all right, so it's 20 feet at the bottom, 34, 34, or 36 feet at the top. The whole path is 10 feet wide. I said, gee, that would be boring. You know, maybe, maybe not, but for most people, it'd be boring. Then it dawned on me, wait a minute, we have the canal. The canal went bankrupt because somebody invented the steam engine. It took the towpath with tracks on it, and now our train went from New Haven to Northampton. Well, in the 70s, the train went bankrupt. So now, advocacy groups like the, uh, the Columbia Greenway folks, uh, the volunteers plus the state, plus the local businesses in the town, they paved the towpath, or the railroad tracks, and now you can ride a bicycle actually from New Haven all the way to Northampton. So I'm going to get into this right now. Can we dim the lights a little bit? And uh, I'll come and try to walk around so I don't walk. Thanks. In the back row, can you kind of see this now? Alright, this is the uh, map of the canal, the bicycle path, and a railroad. What a shame. Just gonna have to deal with it. Alright, so. 
1825, after they finished the Erie Canal, they came over to Connecticut and Massachusetts to start the canal. They started at the Massachusetts-Connecticut line, Granby, Southfield, and Southwick. They're, they started at this point, and they worked their way south. There are 28 blocks to go from Southwick down to New Haven. The following year, in 1826, they started at Southwick line again and worked their way to Northampton. So the bicycle path, the railroad, and the uh, canal took this route. And also Route 10 follows the same route. And next slide. The wheel. <laughs> Maybe the... Uh... So what I have here is... Uh, the, the laptop is way down there. And work it out. So this is the uh, profile of the canal. These are the locks, from, this is ground zero, if you will. This is the uh, Long Island Sound. All these locks bring you up to Southington, to Granby, up to Southwick, back down to Westfield, up to Southampton, eventually to, to Northampton, which is 105 feet above sea level. This in red represents the uh, profile of the railroad, as well as the canal. And it, this, now, how does the lock work? Think of it as a big box. There's a gate that opens. The canal boat goes inside this box. They shut the gates. The water goes up. When the canal boat reaches this, this level here, they open up the gates, and the canal boat continues on. <coughs> Next slide. So this is just a profile of my book. This happens to be in Cheshire. Block 12, is, well, and I won't be talking about this, but this is Lock Keeper's house. <coughs> this is the canal boat that my watercolors that go from New Haven to Northampton through 16 towns. And I have a steam engine here and a bicycle to show you the three modes of transportation uh, that the canal took. Next one. Now, as I mentioned before, all the money from my book, soft cover, hard cover, goes to the South Historical Society. They own the book. I don't get a penny for it, anything. The royalties are donations. And the idea is each town will get two signs along the route. There are 16 towns. Each town will get two signs. And I will also get into this. I'm not sure. Can you see? If I stand here, I'll have to move around a little bit. So, next slide. So when I get to Westfield, chapter 13, I'll talk about how my book is organized. <coughs> now starting in New Haven, and I'll walk over here just so folks can see. This down here is the New Haven Harbor, Long Island Sound. At this point here, New Haven is going to be, is a multi-million dollar program to continue with the bike path from uh, Yale campus to the New Haven Harbor. Right now, my book takes you through city streets. And believe me, it is city streets. You've got to go zigzag. You can work your way through New Haven. But once you get to the campus, Yale campus, you can go from this point pretty much all the way to Westfield with a paved, well-marked road. But Plainville has a section where they are working on creating a, a bicycle path. So you have to go off street into Route 10 a little bit. This is one of my watercolors. Again, each chapter has a watercolor uh, depicting something unique in each of the 16 towns. Now I say watercolor. They are really watercolors. But back in 1825, they didn't have photography. They didn't have color or anything except for paintings. So I decided I'm not showing color at all. Everything is, I took a picture of the watercolors. I'm only showing a black and white or gray tone. This happens to be New Haven Harbor. This ship here is the Amistad. In 1839, the Amistad, which is a slave ship, was in the New Haven Harbor. And in fact, they made a movie out of it. I believe that ship, the replica, was made by Mystic Seaport. Okay, if we go to the next slide. 
Now, Dr. Carl Walter has maps. I have here some maps given to me by the Southwick Historical Society. This is from the Connecticut line all the way to Northampton. These maps were made by Dr. Carl Walter. We're selling these afterwards, $10 each, and all the money, the $10 goes to the Southwick Historical Society. But, so Dr. Carl Walter made up this map which represents the early 1800s. I, I may, I'm not sure, I'm probably in the way a little bit, but. What we have here is New Haven Harbor. This happens to be Route 95. Right here is where the basin is. Now, the basin is, if we go back one slide with my watercolor, get back up a minute. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Right here is a basin. The canal boat is at this point. The tides go up and down. So at the right point, they open up the gates in the, ba in the basin. The canal, the canal boat will go inside and they shut the, the gate. This allows the canal boat to start going up the locks, as you will, up to uh, lock by lock until you get to Massachusetts. So now, if you go back to the next, all right. So here is the basin, the way it was back in the early 1800s. Uh, next slide. And this is Google of the New Haven Harbor. But this is Route 95. All this was filled in. The basin is right over here. So a lot of progress has been made. A lot of, uh, a lot of progress has, in fact, destroyed the canal, the footprint of the canal. I'll walk over here now, just so everybody can see. Okay, next slide. <coughs> now, Hill, Hillside Road is right here. This is the bicycle path. This is the bicycle path that goes downtown New Haven, except it stops here. At this point here is Yale University. But from this point, it's paved on, again all the way to uh, one way or the other, all the way to Westfield. Next slide. Now, the canal of the Wilder Railroad, and now the bicycle path, and this is kind of an economic boom to each one of the towns. I'll give you an example. Right here is a uh, canal way. It's a 300 apartment complex, brand new, 393 apartment units. And the bicycle path goes right by it. So the developer called me up. He bought 175 books. He says that when someone buys an apartment complex, he's going to hand the book to them. That's great. He could, and he's doing that because the bicycle path is part of the selling gimmick, if you will, for the apartment complex. But this next town up is uh, Hamden, Connecticut. And right here is Lot 14. This is Route 10. So you can drive by the lock keeper's house, park your car, and ride, be right on the bicycle path, and go north or south. Um, next slide. Now this is lock 14, this is the lock keeper's house, my rendition. This house still exists. Here is the bicycle path, or the tow path, and here's my uh, canal boat. Next slide. This is a picture I took a few years ago, again the lock keeper's house, the bicycle path, which happened to be the railroad way back when. This is part of the uh, lock that still exists. So you can park your car again. This is the lock keeper's house. Or get in the bicycle path to take a walk or a bicycle ride and see this uh, lock. Okay. okay, next one. Next down up is Cheshire. This part here has just been opened up. My book takes you off road onto the streets to get to uh, the next town up, Southington. But now today, you can get, that's fine, you can get right on the bicycle path and continue on with a well-marked, well-paved uh, bicycle path. Now this is Cheshire, Lock 12, Lock Keeper's House. And this is where I decided to make my book cover from. This Lock Keeper's House exists. It's nice parking. An awful lot of people use the bicycle path they have a little museum there when it's open on weekends or holidays. 
it's an interesting place and a very safe place to visit with your family and go for a bicycle ride or a hike. Okay, next slide. This is an example of Lock 12. So the town of Cheshire rebuilt the locks, gates, the way they existed. These are frozen in time. I mean, they don't work, but it gives you an idea of what the locks look like almost two centuries ago. Next one. Uh, Southington. They just finished this area here, opened it up in Southington. <laughs> the unique thing about Southington is Lock 7 is about about this point here. Lock 7. It's called a long level. From this point here, it's 26 miles to Granby, Connecticut. No locks, all flat water. Amazing bit of engineering by these folks. Okay, we go to the next slide. Now, uh, here's interesting uh, Google map. This is Route 84. If you've ever gone to Hartford, down to New York, take a Route 84. So this is Route 84. This blue line is where the lock, the, the canal went. Of course, when they built the Route 84, they totally destroyed the canal. The bicycle path goes to this point in green. My book takes you, at this point it ends, you have to go into red to get on Route 10 to continue to Plainville. Now they just extended this little part here, which is maybe less than a quarter of a mile. So little by little, they are extending uh, the bike path, so you don't have to go on to Route 10. Okay, next slide. This is my rendition of, of the long level in uh, uh, Southington. Okay, next slide. Plainville. Plainville's having a little bit of a tough time. This is Route 10. This is where the canal went through Plainville. And in black here is the bicycle path. So I'm taking you, the bicycle is a hiker, on the streets in Plainville. They're trying to work the, like, the Pan Am Railroad is still active. And they're trying to deal with how do you put a bike path next to an active railroad. It's just a spur in terms of railroad, but it still is in use. So in terms of the town, the bicycle enthusiasts, uh, the railroad, there's certain difficulties. But they are working their way through having a bike path next to the railroad tracks. But the Plainville has a nice, uh, uh, the Plainville Historical Society has a nice museum. Next slide. Oh, Norton Park. At this point here is the bridge. So I stood at the bridge. The Plainville and Norton Park, the canal exists. There's water in it, there's a towpath. So what I did is I just put my canal boat, you know, some horses pulling the canal boat in the uh, existing canal. Okay, the next one. Now, this is the Plainville Historical Society on the second floor. They have a museum. These are all watercolors, different things, uh, actual archives from the canal. Uh, next slide shows you another part of the, the museum. They're not open in the wintertime, but in the summertime, weekends and holidays, they are open. It's, it's a very interesting uh, display is what they did. Next one. Farmington. Right here, this is where the canal, the, the railroad goes. This is where the bike path goes. And they just built a bridge over Route 6. So you don't have to worry about crossing traffic. This, I think, was just about put active last year in 2018. So I, I circled the area here where this, the bridge is over Route 6. Now, the railroad, as well as the bike path, is here. However, since the canal, because you have to have flat water, follows the contours of the earth, the canal follows this way here, Route 10. And at this point here, they, you can park your car. Uh, they have a little parking area. And you can visit. The canal is still there. The towpath is still there. And you can park your car and walk to the Farmington River. Next slide. We'll go on to the next slide. Now this is my rendition of uh, watercolor of the, the aqueduct going across the, the uh, Farmington River. We'll go to the next slide. 
Now, this is a, a picture of 1868 of the Farmington Aqueduct, the way it existed in 1868. In 1955 flood, Army Corps engineers tore it all down. You know, there's some other places where the Army Corps of Engineers where they tore down the canal. Because of the flood, large and more that would build up on this and it caused a lot of water damage. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. But if you park your car and go to the park, you can walk down, literally walk down the farm of the river, and this part of the foundation is still there. And when we get to Westfield, there is a part of the foundation of the little river where just the bottom part of the foundation still exists. Okay, next one. Avon, Connecticut. The, the bicycle path crosses Route 44 and you kind of get on the streets a little bit. But right here is where the canal uh, went across Route 44. If you go to the next slide, there's a freight house. So this is Route 44. This is an arch and the canal boat went underneath the arch underneath Route 44. If you go to the next slide, so the Avon Historical Society put this plaque on both sides of Route 44, saying, you know, to give people an idea that this is where they can now cross Route 44 in Avon. Okay, let's go forward. Sinsbury. Right here, so in Sinsbury, it's a well-marked bicycle path pretty much follows the railroad and the canal. Right here is Old Canal Way. Go to the next slide. This, uh, the canal exists there, so this is my watercolor of the canal boat in the canal. We go to the next slide. This is Old Canal Way. You go to 200 Hot Metal Street. You work your way down. You can park your car. This is the way the canal looks today, the way it looks centuries ago, almost two centuries ago. And this is the way the towpath looked. So what I did is in my watercolor, I just kind of duplicated this uh, and put a canal boat in it. East Granby, Connecticut. This is a nice shot through uh, East Granby. The problem is, this is well paved, this is well paved, the northern part. <coughs> You see the little jog here? There's a nursery there, and the nursery does not want anybody on their property. So the bicycle path, you've got to go into uh, East Granby a little bit to Route 10, 20210, then get back on the, uh, the bicycle path. Now, I have parking here at the park, but just at this point in the Route 189, they, you can park there now rather than drive into the park. If we go to the next slide, Grand Brook Park is by four kids where I'm suggesting people to park. But there was an arch here. And the bicycle, uh, the canal boat went over the arch. If you go to the next slide, this is what the arch looked like in 1934. Now again, we had a 1955 flood. This arch existed up until 1955, but when the heavy rains, all the logs created a huge dam. So this became a dam and a, a significant problem. So the Army Corps engineers came in and they tore it all down. So the next slide will show you the way they exist today. There's a uh, bridge going over the uh, uh, Salmon Road. So I, if you go back one slide again, Go back. Oh. <laughs> so, and, and this now does not exist anymore, this arch, but a regular bike path goes over it. So we go forward a couple slides. Now, off of Granby Road, this uh, Granby Railroad Station exists. Uh, next slide. <coughs> The bicycle path kind of goes in one direction. The canal goes in the next direction. But remember I mentioned that in Southwick and uh, Panama Lake, 
the uh, canal went south or north. When you go south from Kagamon Lake, it starts to be Canal Lot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 28 till you get to New Haven. Or if you're going north, it still locks 1, 2, 3, to lock 32 till you get to North Hampton. So here are six locks uh, for Route 189. This is Route 20. Uh, if you ever went down to uh, 12210 to get to Bradley Airport, you would take Route 20. But this here is a little interesting at this point in Grandy. If you go to the next slide, this is my rendition of what the locks look like. This is what it looks like in color. But this is what I show in my paintings. This is lock six. Lock one is way up here, which is 220 feet above sea level. And it goes right into uh, Congobon Lakes, the same 220 feet above sea level. When we get to the other side, the north side of Conwell Lakes, I have another watercolor showing the locks getting going down to Westfield. So Route 189 went right across here, but this Lock 6 is in Grandy, Connecticut. Lock 7 is 26 miles all the way to Southington. That would say, again, that mission for the long level. This is where the locks, the uh, canals, cross Route 189 in Grandy. Down here below is Salmon Brook. Uh, river, our Salmon Brook uh, waterway. Now, we've already, the South Historical Society has already made up two signs to go in Grandy. But it will go somewhere here, but people drive over 189, and this is, I guess, the Hartford Road. They haven't a clue that this is where the canal crossed. So hopefully, once these signs get into uh, next to the road, that uh, people have become more and more aware that something historic happened here almost two centuries ago. Okay, next one. Southfield. This here is Conlon Lakes. This is Massachusetts line. This is the jog, if you will, in Southwick. And this is Grandy here. This is West Southfield here. It is a guard gate at this point, which I'll talk about in a minute. But the the towpath, the canal kind of goes this way from Conwell Lakes, but the bicycle path, the railroad, can take a different direction. At this point here, I'm going to talk about this particular point when we get to Westfield. In Westfield, by a big Y, is where the canal finally comes back to uh, the railroad tracks or the bicycle path. If you go to the next slide, there was a guard gate in West Southfield, the West Southfield ran the south of the line at the end of the jog. The next slide, now if you take the bicycle path in Southwick, going to uh, Connecticut, this guard gate still exists. And the idea of the guard gate the way it exists today is it prevents the water from draining out of Conlon Lake into the canal, into the brook. So if you take a bicycle ride or a hike, Park your car at uh, uh, Conlon Road. Uh, a short walk, you can see where this car gate is. Okay, next slide. This is just the border of Massachusetts and Connecticut. Next one. Southwick. We'll get into it again, but this is the, uh, we just put up in October in Southwick Historical Society put a sign up at Route 57 in Southwick, uh, near the high school or the library. The Route 57 takes a dip down, and at the bottom there was a restaurant, St. George, uh, Giorgio's or something. But right at that point, the canal crossed the Route 57. So today, if you drive on Route 57, you will see a sign that the Southwick Historical Society put up, and you get an idea where the canal crossed. Now, at this, here, at the Congamon Road, where Congamon Road passes by Saunders Boathouse, there's a little restaurant, the hood, a Red Riding Hood. Bike path goes right by there, and there, the owner was nice enough to sell books. So, so far, they, this past year, they sold 80 books, bicycles that drive by. Pretty neat, I thought. So I want to give them a plug for selling the books. <laughs> Okay, next slide. 
in October, and this is the Southwark Historical Society. Ruth Preston is the uh, president of the Southwark Historical Society, so she, she just cut the ribbon. But here's an example of the sign, the way it appears on Route 57. It's not a huge sign, but it's made out of plain aluminum, with vinyl, and would be protected with a galvanized coat and it's black. So hopefully it'll last for many, many years. Okay, next sign. This is someone on a rail trail in, in uh, Southwick. We go next one. Now this is the South Pond of Kogman Lake. Right in the corner here is my kayak. When I took this picture, I wasn't familiar with Kogman Lake or the guard gate or where all this came together. So I didn't dare go all the way down to the end of it. But today I know that you can actually take a canoe or a kayak and go all the way into the canal and actually get up to the guard gate and come back safely. But again, when I took the picture, I didn't really know that. Next one. Now, South, if you saw in Granby, I had locks one through six going up to Kongamon Lake, which is 220 feet above sea level. At this point here, South Long Yard Road crosses here. And way up here is the uh, north pond of Kongamon Lake. Again, which I mentioned before a couple of times, 220 feet above sea level. So Dr. Carl Walter took me here. I don't know who owns the property, but we walked down to a field. And I turned around and I looked up. And what they did is when they built the canal, they actually cut it the mountain with a big V, which you can see here. So I looked up and I got the impression of these were locks one through four in Southwick. And this is the way it could have looked like almost two centuries ago. Now the locks are gone. Again, the 1955 flood took everything away. I uh, pretty much drained, I believe, Condamon Lake. So I reconstructed it in my mind in terms of the water cover and put it all the way back. Go, go to the next slide. Now I'm going to talk about Westfield. I'll get into a little bit about Westfield where the canal went. This is a 1831 map of Westfield. And someone drew in where the canal was in Westville, where they thought it was in 1835, or where it actually is in 1835, because in 1835, they opened up from South of the line all the way to Northampton, the, uh, the canal. And here is a feeder path from uh, uh, Salmon, uh, uh, Salmon Brook, uh, not Salmon Brook, Salmon Falls, and Winoco Falls, and Winoco. This feeder line fed water into Upper Lock House Road in Southampton. So the water at this point either went to Northampton or went to Westfield to fill the canal up with water. Okay, next slide. Now I'm going to describe how my book is organized. Uh, okay, next one. So I have a map in each chapter. There are 16 chapters, 16 towns, and I show a map of each town. And I have here, I'm going to talk about, in Westfield, I'm suggesting that Shaker Road in uh, Cardinal Lane is where the canal crossed Shaker Road, and up, which I'm showing down the bottom. And up here, by the Mass Turnpike, Arch Road, is where the, the canal went uh, over Arms Brook. And I'm suggesting that's by the Boy Scout uh, uh, office or near the uh, turnpike entrance. And I'm suggesting that's the second place Westville could put a sign. But the bicycle path kind of works its way through Westville into uh, Southampton. But you notice down here, the, the uh, canal goes and takes a different path. It goes near Shaker Road behind the West Coast shops, and it works its way back to uh, where the, close to where the big Y is. Okay, go to the next slide. So, I kind of describe, <coughs> there are several, in terms of the uh, bicycle path itself, when I'm doing my research, I found that at least 18 different names existed for the bicycle path from New Haven to Northampton. The Farmington Canal, the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail, 
is one of the most popular because uh, the folks in Connecticut uh, popularized the canal much more than the folks in Massachusetts. So I, I described the different names of the canal. The route, the distances, for example, what do we have for Westfield? I have almost 6.7 6 miles in Westfield. Then I described, I showed two different paths in Westfield, just like in Farmington, Connecticut, I showed two different paths. If you want to follow the canal, you have to follow Shaker Road. And I give you directions, you have to go by Westfield Shops, Meadow Street, and connect to uh, the Westfield River. Or you can just follow a bicycle path into downtown Westfield. At the moment, you've got to go into Westfield to get to the Westfield River. But that section is going to open up soon, too. You go to the next slide. So I have a legend. I show you where the railroad, the railroad trail is, the, the bicycle path, on street, park, the canal, where the railroad is, and they show mileage and whatnot. Next one. Now, this is kind of interesting, at least to me, because this is, well, first off, this is Route 10. This is the bicycle path in red. Now, this is where the canal went. And I want to stop here in a moment. Where this, where this point here is, it's close to where I'm recommending the sign goes in the Cardinal Lane and Shaker Road. But also at this point, if you leave 187 and going up Shaker Road, you start to go up a hill. Just as you start going up the hill, on the left is the West Springfield Waterworks in 142 Shaker Road. It's a paved road that goes into the waterworks, and they have a big gate here. But if you were just to drive in maybe 75 feet, stop, and look up to your right, you can see the canal. It's there. You can see the towpath. There are trees in it and whatnot. But it's a perfect example of Westville as to what the canal actually looked like. And there are very few places in Westville where you can actually see what the canal looked like. So if you have the opportunity, just think of 142 Shaker Road. Uh, West Springfield Waterworks owns the property, so I'm sure you could just park your car and look at it, and nobody will bother you. I grew up about here, on the local street. Okay, next slide. So I, I give directions of the, 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 where to park your car. I have little arrows, take a, go straight, take a left, take a right. I show distances by each arrow. In Westwood, if you follow the, the bicycle path, at least to downtown Westwood, it's pretty straight. Just could keep going to hit downtown Westwood. Then you've got to go off, off of the, the streets in Westfield. Uh, in fact, you have to go from Westfield to Southampton on the streets, if you will. And I, 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 just, I do give you good directions, I believe, uh, how to work your way through Westfield in uh, Southampton. Next slide. So I give a little bit of history about Westfield. I give a little bit of history about the canal. Next slide. Now this is my rendition of the aqueduct that crosses Little River. Where the, uh, 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 I'm trying to think of, Mainline Drive. There's a Salvation Army store there by the Westfield shops. That's Mainline Drive. If you drive to the end of Mainline Drive, park your car, and there's a field there. If you walk across the field, you will come across the corner of Little River. So I stood here making this watercolor. This canal, this is an aqueduct that crossed uh, the Little River. If you saw earlier in Farmington, Connecticut, there was this huge water uh, aqueduct that crossed the Farmington River. We can also park your car and walk down. But they have a nice little park there. Here, I'm not sure who owns the property, but there's not much around to some of the stock you from walking or looking at it. But if you look at this point here, the Little River, you can see the foundation. There are some blocks that represent the leftover from the actual foundation. Then if you looked at the Little River, you can see rapids at that point. So between this foundation and this foundation is 40 feet. Because I knew it was 40 feet from here to here, I just put this foundation in, the next foundation in. Each foundation is 40 feet 
part. So you get the 300 feet. So this is an actual representation of the aqueduct, the way it exists in the West Hill. And it doesn't appear any other place. Now I donated one of these uh, water plugs to the Urban Smith uh, Museum in West Hill. So any, Terrence, if you ever write a book, ever do something, an article, any one of my water plugs, you're free to use them. I don't, I don't sell them, I don't do anything. I think it's important that people are aware that history once occurred here, but really not many people know about it. So this is one way of making people uh, know about it. And this is, this, just to let you know, they're actually really watercolors. But the good thing is, in black and white, you don't see any uh, mistakes in colors. <laughs> OK, this is the uh, Westfield Railway Station. I believe Hoyt Willis is here. He took this picture in uh, 1990 of the railroad station. But I talked about the railroad, a little bit about the railroad in Westfield. Next slide. This is the uh, railroad station in 1912 from a postcard. This engine is heading north toward Albany. The Westfield River is here. But going across, you can't really see it in the picture. You can see it in the postcard. Going across these tracks is the original railroad tracks that crossed the uh, railroad. Some of the tracks are still there if you want to walk around this area and look at it. But this is also where the canal crossed. And this is what they call North Basin, which, which is a turnaround for the canal boats and a place to park the canal boats as uh, canal boats came and left or I need to stay for a couple weeks. Then I have a little off trail. So each town, I talk a little bit about the town. Westwood City Hall, Grandmother's Garden, etc. Just so folks, if they wanted to visit and drive somewhere, get an idea of where to go. Next slide. So at the end of each chapter, I give directions. All my directions go from south to north. I'm saying, what happens if somebody wants to go from Northampton down to North Haven? Do the reverse. So I have the direction of going from north down to south. Okay, next slide. So, Western State has some good, you can go online, uh, by Google Western State. This Charles Brockman wrote a book about Sheridan, Thomas Sheridan in Westfield. Uh, you can read the text here, but basically, the article is a forgotten resident of Westfield. He was a wealthy Westfield resident who decided to be funded pretty much from uh, south of the line all the way to Northampton. The whole distance, building the locks, building the arches, digging out, hogging out the dirt. He did everything. He pretty much funded it himself. And soon after the canal went bankrupt, he lost everything. And he left Westfield, to, he lives now, lives in Texas, and I think that's where he passed away. There's another individual, Joe Camposio, the history of the canal system between New Haven and Northampton, 1822 and 1847. So you can go online and see these uh, articles from uh, 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 that the Westfield State has put together. And it's the Historical Journal of Massachusetts. Uh, next slide, next one. Now what I have here is some pictures I took. These are what I have, the remains. This is Southwick's Lock 8. Again, the West Springfield uh, Waterworks by Canal Drive. There's again a gated area where the West Springfield keeps their, uh, uh, their, their buildings and trucks and whatnot. But if you could go behind there, you can see the remnants of the canal. This happened to be in the wintertime. So I have a few slides showing the remains of the canal near Westfield, or in this case, you can, beyond Shaker Road, you can find some of the remains of the canal. Next one. This is earlier I mentioned Road, 142 uh, Shaker Road, just as you go up the hill on Shaker Road. So you can drive in West Franklin Waterworks, and you can look to your right. It's much easier to see that there's snow in the ground. But here's the towpath. Here's the canal. Here's the hill. And what they did is they took the high side of the hill and they took the dirt from the hill and they put it on a 
the low side and they built up a tow path. So they didn't have to uh, carry the dirt very far to build a canal. They just took it from the high side of the hill and moved it to the low side of the hill. Very easy, very efficient. So this remains still exists in Westfield. Next slide. Now this is the little river. Uh, right here is a, earlier I showed you my watercolor with the aqueduct across the little river. But at this point here, you can see the remains, not very good in the picture, but the remains of the foundation still exist. Up here, if you're a walk up there, you can still see the canal. And again, they took the, the side of the mountain, they took the dirt from the side of the mountain, put it on the other side of the canal to build a towpath. But it's still there. Now, I've got to remember, this is two centuries have gone by, almost two centuries. So, after 200 years, you have to use your imagination to some, to some extent to, to picture where the canal went. But it's visible. The next slide shows you the remains on the other side of the Little River. Now, this is Dr. Carl Walter. He has two maps that I'm selling some here from the Southwark Historical Society at $10 a map. I just have them. Massachusetts section. But he hiked, walked, made a map of both the Connecticut Canal and the Massachusetts Canal. And he showed me on the other side of the Little River. This is where the canal is. Uh, you, you, you walk there, you can still see remnants of the canal. Up here in the distance is where Columbia Manufacturing is. And way in the distance is where the uh, Westfield uh, Greenway, the bicycle path is. Next slide. Again, this is showing the remains on the uh, other side of the little river. And way up here is the bike path. You see this telephone pole? I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But here is where the, the railroad spur was to go to the Columbia Manufacturing at one time. I still, I think there are still uh, some railroad ties still there. But Carl is looking, showing me where the canal actually was. But you've got to remember, they filled in the canal to, uh, uh, to a level of 12 or 14 feet so they could build a railroad on top of the canal uh, a footprint, a foundation. Next slide. Now, we're going to talk about my, these signs a minute. Everybody recognizes, you know, General Electric, Chevy, Coca-Cola. The idea I have for the next slide is Southwick is donating these signs free of charge to those 16 communities that the canal goes through. And my idea was if each sign looks the same, except that at the bottom we'll have Western Historical Society, or, or Western Historical Commission, Southwick Historical Society, whatever. But as you travel Route 10 or go from town to town, if you see the same sign, hopefully people will have a, a, kind of a recognition that something historical has happened here two centuries ago. Okay, next slide. Now, this is uh, Cardinal Lane, the shop of Shaker Road. This is Shaker Road. This is where proposing a sign would go. Now, the signs are already made up, and hopefully in this coming spring, the Western Historical Commission will have some sort of a ceremony to, uh, uh, to promote, the, if you will, the canal and the history of the canal. Now, Southwick did the same thing I said in October, where you have the uh, select people, the historical society, canal representatives, Department of Public Works, where he took a picture. Unfortunately, it was pouring rain when they uh, dedicated the sign. That's the way it goes. Sometimes the mics don't work either. <laughs> okay, next one. Now this is the Arch Road. This is near the Boy Scout camp. You go past the Boy Scout camp, and just before you come to uh, where the Mass Turnpike crosses over Arch Road, our Lockhouse Road. So Lockhouse Road, Arch Road, were all named after something that you know, the canal itself. Underneath here is an arch. I show an arch. This is actually the arch in Granby, just to give you an example. But the canal crossed over this archway. And Dr. Carl Walter kind of shown me where the canal crossed. And this is Arms Brook. 
So hopefully this coming spring and snow, there will be a, a, another sign showing where the canal crossed uh, Arch Road. All right, next, sli next slide. Now, Westfield State University and the Westfield Historical Commission asked me to write an article about the canal in Westfield. So I did that. The name of the article that I chose was Westfield Interstate Canal in the 21st Century. So what I do is I talk about the canal in Westfield and I describe where the canal, where you can actually see the canal today. Most of it has been destroyed because of the railroad uh, was put over the canal in downtown Westfield. But I think it's an interesting read because I do talk about the canal and I do get a little bit of detail. But I don't talk about who owned what, what shareholders, how much dirt was moved and whatnot. I try to keep it at a very high level so you can read the article. And I guess what Western State is doing is they're having a special uh, 350th anniversary presentation in their historical journal of Massachusetts. And it's very interesting. They have a lot of history about Massachusetts all over the state. And they're doing something special for the 350th anniversary. So, hopefully you get a chance to read the article. Next slide. So again, this is the same picture I showed before. At this, at some point in time here from Main Street onto the Westfield River, they're going to extend uh, the uh, bicycle path to the Westfield River. But then when you get, I show, I have two directions in Westfield. I show the bicycle path and also Shaker Road. And then, but once you get north of uh, the Westfield River, I, I, my, my directions take you where the canal went, if you will. So a lock house road, uh, there are all these 10 locks that brought you up to Southampton. <coughs> once you get up to this point here, uh, Conquan Lake was 220 feet above sea level. Then you drop down to Westfield. The great summit up here in uh, Southampton was 235 feet above sea level. So I take you to uh, basically the south, the Westfield Brickyard Road to Southampton, which I'll get into. But there's also uh, there's other routes you can take. But I try to keep people off of Route 10, 12 through 10. It's a it's a busy, congested highway, and it's not really conducive to uh, families riding a bike, riding bicycles. Okay, next slide. Oh, going to go the other way. No, I can. Okay, next slide. Oh, a couple things in the Westfield. I mentioned at this point here in, in Southwick, where the canal left the railroad and the bicycle path went down Conwell Lakes, Shaker Road behind Westfield Shops, and it ended up coming back here by where the big Y is. Someday I'd like to see somebody put a, a stone marker showing Southwick where the canal left the railroad and the canal the bicycle path and where it came back into Westfield by the big Y. They, I got the idea because in Southington, Connecticut, they have a, a, a random marker showing where the canal is and where the uh, uh, railroad was. And I, said, no, I thought it would be a nice feature something for somebody to come up with the money and, and pop something in there. Anyways, next slide. Southampton. Uh, <coughs> Southampton is, everything is done on the streets. There is no official bike path in Southampton. But basically, there is a uh, bonafide railroad tracks, which are nice and flat, but the folks in Southampton uh, have to deal with building a bicycle path. And, and quite frankly, I think there are property owners that don't want it, and that's the, that's the right, that's the privilege. But I, I think over many years, something will have to happen in Southampton. But you can, I, my path takes you on the side streets to get you to the Mayan Hand Rail Trail in East Hampton. But it's also possible to follow Route 10 to get quickly to get to uh, East Hampton. Uh, next slide. Oh, and in, in Southampton, 
at the corner of Ipgard Road and College Highway. There's Lock 22. Now this building exists. This is a, was a lock keeper's house. It was also a storehouse. So this is a very profitable enterprise for these folks, the Lyman and Elder, because they from from New Haven, they had all their supplies from up from uh, uh, Long Island Sound, and it's just regular supplies, whether it be uh, salt or honey or, or lumber or coal or whatever it is. It was all stored here for distribution to the local folks in Southampton, I guess in Westfield and Northampton. But this lockhouse still exists. This side of the, uh, the lock, the uh, masonry blocks are still there. What I did is I put the gate in and I built up this side the way it could have looked two centuries ago. And of course I put my canal boat in there along with some horses. But the next slide, We'll show you the way it exists today. Here's the lock keeper's house. This side of the lock is still there. Because there's snow on the ground, you can get a better idea of what things look like. Now the next slide will show you. This is Dr. Carl Walter showing me at this point here, the one side of the masonry locks is indented. So when they opened up the gates, the gates actually went inside the foundation just to save room, because the locks were real roughly about 11 feet wide. But you can also see these railroad tracks still exist. They exist on both sides of the highway. This sign still exists from the uh, Southampton Historical Society. They give you an idea that uh, something historical was passed through here. Now, the other side of the street of uh, College Highway is a little ice cream shop. Uh, you can park your car, walk around. Okay, next slide. We're almost done. We're almost at the end of this. <laughs> East Hampton, the Manhattan River is here. The canal kind of works its way here. But this is a nice path. It's all well paved in East Hampton. It goes to downtown East Hampton. There's shops there. There's a restaurant. With, uh, it's a nice bicycle ride. We go next slide. This is our, I'm trying to figure out East Hampton. Which, what would it look like? So what I decided to do is, here's a canal boat being pulled by horses. Now, horses pull the canal boats. Canal boats maybe four miles per hour. The uh, uh, freighters, which carried up to 25 tons, were pulled by mules or oxen. And they could only go two miles an hour. But behind here, is Mount Tom. So I figured people recognize Mount Tom, so they would get an idea of the scale of the location. But this is East Hampton, and behind here is the Mount Tom um, mountain range. Next slide. This is an example of the Manhattan Rail Trail in uh, Southampton. It's well marked, it's a nice trail, and it's well used. Okay, the last point, uh, the last town is Northampton. It's a well-marked rail trail. Here's the Union Station here. Where I have a circle here, they just opened up uh, a section of the, uh, the bicycle path. Now, my book takes you on a street for a little while. But in reality, when I rode my bicycle through here, you, you could ride the rail trail. It had a chain link fence with a hole in it. So we would drag our bicycles to the chain link fence, and go across the tracks to the other side, they can go back on the real trail. Of course, that's, that was illegal. But now they built the uh, 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 underpass underneath the railroad, so everything's nice and safe and legal. And they just built this uh, a, a year or so ago. And last, next slide. This is the end. Now, the folks in Northampton and Massachusetts are trying to extend. Northampton did a great job of bicycle paths. And they, they're coming up with the Mass Central Rail Trail, which will take you from Northampton all the way to Boston. I think it's only 40% complete because they have to link all these uh, various railroad, uh, rail trails together, bicycle paths together. But eventually, you'll be able to ride your bike from New Haven to uh, Northampton, from Northampton to Boston. The next slide is the last slide. And this is the uh, railroad bridge, the bicycle path now over the Connecticut River, and I 
think this is the last. Okay. Oh, remember in New, York, in New Haven, Connecticut, I talked about the basin where they had this gate, and the, the, the canal boats would go inside the, uh, this basin, if you will, and they shut the gates to, to uh, marshal to keep the canal boats. In Northampton, they had the same kind of basin. So this is the end. The Lock 32 is behind here. And this is a marshalling area where canal boats would go into Northampton and ultimately go into the Connecticut River. And the goal was they had plans to take you from the Connecticut River in Northampton all the way to Canada by canal in the St. Lawrence Seaway, in the St. Lawrence River. Well, obviously that never happened because the railroad took over. It's much cheaper to operate a railroad all year round. But I believe UMass built a, uh, a boat ramp here for sculling and whatnot. So you can actually drive your car down there today. Not when I made the painting or when I wrote the book, but you can drive your car down to the same location and get an idea, look at the Connecticut River at least. Okay, I think the last slide. I want to thank you very much. I will have a book signing. As I mentioned before, I don't get a penny for the books. The South Oak Historical <coughs> Society owns the books. And all money and donations go for these signs. And I've sold, fortunately, several hundred books, raised several thousand dollars, and uh, this has been, been a great project. And thank you very much for attending. <laughs>
Other than that, thank you, everybody, for coming. We love Westfield. I love all of you being here. We'll see you at the next one. Come on into the reception. Thank you again for being here.